Hey, X Dancers, Anthony Rose. Today we're covering turning tips. So how to spin in two step or even all the other country dances. So this is part one of two. So we're going to cover the first half of a dozen tips. 12 of them. So we're going to cover six today and then next Tuesday we'll cover the other six. So these are guaranteed ways that if you do these things, your turning will be a whole lot better. So stick around. All right, so one common misconception that people have, and sometimes people teach this, is that you should do one turn whenever you turn. Your common or degree of turn that you assume is going to happen in two step is always going to be one and a half. It doesn't mean you're always going to turn one and a half, but we're going to break down why you should always assume that you're turning one and a half when you turn in two step. All right, so what we're going to do in our basic turn in two step, if she's facing backwards, she needs to assume that she's going to end up facing forward. And if she's forward, she needs to assume that she's going to finish facing backwards. Now I see some videos online and I've actually seen some teachers teaching it this way. When she's actually facing him, they do one rotation and she ends up facing him again. Now I'm going to break down why I'm not saying you can't do that, but it is a huge mistake huge mistake, listen to me, to learn that as the first turn you do in two step or as some sort of basic turn. That is not a basic turn. That is a variation of a basic turn. We can do that. I don't normally do that, but we can do that. Let me break down why that is not your basic turn. If we're in sweetheart position and if I'm coming towards you and I lead her for a turn, but I let go of her for a free spin, how much should she turn? One and a half, right? Whichever direction she starts facing, she needs to assume she's going to finish facing the opposite direction. So like if we're here in this side to side and we do side by side free spins, she's going to naturally assume she's facing forward. In the same way as she's facing forward, she needs to assume that she's going to finish facing backwards. The reason why I say that is because that is the default built in degree of turn across two step. If she does one turn constantly, then she's never going to get the feel of two step. What does she do if I'm not physically touching her, leading her, telling her to do something? She has to know what to do in the absence of lead. So if she's facing forward and I lead her for that turn, she needs to know because I'm not touching her, how much should she turn? And that is one and a half. Okay. Now, if on the other hand, if, if I only lead her for one turn from the very beginning and she gets accustomed to this, then she's going to have that as a built ingrained degree of turn. And it's really going to mess everything up beyond this point. So ladies, what you need to be able to do when turning is you need to be able to understand that in the absence of him leading you for more or less than one turn or one and a half turn that if you start forward, you finish backwards and vice versa by having that as a default then things will start to work. Now, on the other hand, we can lead her for one turn. So let's say that I'm in promenade position and I want to lead her here. I've just cut her off and not physically allowed her to do the one and a half. And that's perfectly okay. We can lead her for 47 and a half turns. I'm not going to do that right now, but if I do that, I'm leading her to manipulate or change her assumption. So what I want you guys to do is practice actually doing these as one and a half turns, and then everything will start to click together a whole lot more. All right, leaders, dancing is the only activity that we have remaining where you get to ask her to do stuff and she never gets to tell you no. But the secret word that we're using here, the key is to ask, don't tell. So you just got to ask her to do stuff and she's going to say yes. So here's what we mean. All right. So what I'm talking about when I talk about ask, don't tell is if I'm going to lead her for a turn, I just have to initiate her motion and then allow her to do it. Here's an analogy I want to use. So Rose and I have now been together for seven years. We just had our four year wedding anniversary. <laughs> four. <laughs> Long. Yeah, it just seems like longer than that. But <laughs> so um, the first time we went out, and I'm assuming a lot of you married couples, uh, you first time you went on a date, this is probably what happened. Let, let's say you went to a restaurant and you walk up to the door and here's what probably happened because you got a second date is you open the door, you allow her to walk through it, and then he walks in behind her. Unfortunately, people tend to, that's the way we want people to lead, but they end up leading in another way, which is he opens the door, man, I hope she figures that out. 
He's more concerned about what he's doing rather than actually signaling what it is you're asking her to do. The third way that people lead is he kind of puts his hand on her back and just mashes her face through the door as opposed to asking her to do it. Just open the door and then allow her to walk through it. If I want her to do a turn, all I've got to do is initiate the turn and then I allow her to do it. So the rotation or the connection between the partners happens with the initiation. It's just starting her motion and then allowing her to do it, right? So you don't have to cram her through the whole turn. So when people lead these the wrong way, like so if I went from here and I went, I, I'm sorry, from closed position to promenade, for example, I have to lead her with my body. This is opening the door and then we both walk through it. Unfortunately, leading it while he's like, okay, I hope she figures that out. It's quick, quick, slow, slow. And then he just starts going over here, leaving her on her own or he gets too forceful and he shoves her through that thing. And people lead turns. Ladies, I'm sure that you will probably agree with me here that there's too many leaders out there that feel like they have to like maneuver and manipulate every little detail. Now, to break this down in a technical way, women are angels. They have this halo that goes around their head. It goes the entire way around, okay? When I lead a turn, I place the hand into the halo and I circle it that same circumference around that halo. Now get a little bit deeper on that, we're gonna take that circle and break it down into four quadrants, okay? So if your circle were here, and this were a clock, okay? So this is 12, three, six, nine. We lead from 12 to three and let it glide the rest of the way, right? So if I'm from 12 to three, then we just lead, give the connection for that, and then she finishes. We give the connection for that, and then she finishes. So if you watch this going this way, I'm at 12 o'clock here, and I wanna lead it to here. So if I'm going forward, from promenade position. I go quick, quick, slow, slow. I put the hand into the halo. I lead the beginning and I let her glide. I lead, glide, lead, glide, lead, glide, lead, glide. So I don't have to actually lead it as rah, the entire time, you know? So you just ask and she says yes. You ask, not tell, and she says yes, okay? And she will certainly appreciate the lot and enjoy dancing with you a whole lot more. Okay, so when we're talking about leading and following, another important thing when it comes to turns specifically is not only what do I do, not only how do I do it, but when do I do it? It's being at the right moment and turning her at the right time or her starting her rotation at the right time. So because if she's on the wrong foot, she's not gonna be able to do what you're asking her to do. So let's break this down. All right, so if I'm leading Rose forward, in a promenade position, and then I lead her for just a basic inside turn, your most basic, basic, basic of all the turns. There's certain things that have to happen here. Obviously, when do I lead it, how do I lead it, and what do I lead? So a lot of people focus on what do we do? And then later on, they focus on how they do it, which is the connection, the partnership, how do I lead it, how does she follow it, how does she do her turn? All of that stuff is important. But the thing that's overlooked the most is leading her at the right time. When do I lead it? So if you notice, that when we're moving forward, she go quick, quick, slow, slow, and she's forward on her left foot. As she's forward on her left foot and her weight's on her left foot, then she can start her rotation from there, okay? The reason why I'm breaking that down is because leaders tend to lead things too early a lot of times in the beginning, or they lead them too late, and she's on the wrong foot. Now, if I don't lead that at the correct time, then she's gonna find that turn a whole lot more difficult. So if I go quick, quick, slow, and then all of a sudden I start leading her here, she hasn't gotten to the opposite foot, onto that left foot, and it's gonna be a lot harder. Now, if she is on that left foot because her left foot is forward and she's facing forward, that's gonna be a much easier time to do that rotation. On the other hand, sometimes they lead it late, and so they'll uh, kind of move her forward for a quick, quick, slow, slow. Now she's in the process of taking that next step. Go ahead and start taking it, and then we lead that, and that's still going to be difficult. So here's a thing that is really, really confusing for a lot of people. So if I ask somebody, when does she turn here? They'll say, well, she turns on the quick. No, she actually turns off of the slow. That's a completely different conversation. If she turns on to the quick, she's not gonna be able to get there because she'll go quick, quick, slow, slow. And we think about this being holding and then as soon as she steps on that quick, then there's a turn and that's too late. She has to turn off 
of the slow, not onto the quick. So she's gonna go quick, quick, slow, sa, low, quick, quick, slow, slow. So she has to be forward on that left foot. So she has to be turning at the right time, right? The same thing would go for when she's turning backwards. She has to turn off of that second slow. So she would go quick, quick, slow. Now look at her feet. Her feet are back. She's back on her left foot. And now that she's on that foot, that is the correct time to lead that rotation. If I, again, if I waited too long and she is in motion with that next step, it's gonna make that turn much more difficult for her. So if we go quick, quick, slow, slow, and then she starts taking that step, that's gonna make that turn much more difficult. So what do I do? How do I do it? But leaders, followers, really, really understand when do I do it? All right, so another thing that's gonna help you guys with your turn is to look where you're going. So one thing we wanna try to avoid is spotting or staring or looking at your partner, all right? Now, now I know that the guys, they're, they're handsome hunks of meat, but what I want you guys to do is pay attention to what you're actually doing in the dance, not so much to him. So let's break that down a little further. All right, so you notice that when I lead Rose forward and I start to turn her, she's gonna be looking in the direction that she's going, not at her partner, okay? So a lot of times ladies get this misconception that she's somehow gonna see something that he does and then she'll know what she has to do. But really, we're gonna kinda ignore what you see from him and pay more attention to what you feel from him anyway. So what happens when you look in the direction of movement is you're telling your body where it should go. All right, so if she steps forward and she starts to move, she's projecting her body in that direction because that's where she's going. And then she just simply finds that spot again and she's just telling her body to continue to move in that direction. If she's looking at him on the other hand, there's a few problems with that. Number one, she has no awareness of is she turning in a straight line or is she just kind of weaving all over the place, right? But also, in addition, he has his own place to be. So he's gonna be moving around you to get where he needs to be also. So if I'm moving around her, if she's spotting forward, she can still turn in a straight line. However, if she spots at me this time, then if I get into my, my position and I'm going here, that's really gonna mess her up. She really has no awareness of where it is she's going. So, and plus, I mean, it's just kind of creepy if you're in like promenade position and you're like, mm, hey, and we're, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I like it late at night after a few <laughs> drinks, but what I'm saying is, is ladies, look where you're going. You're always going that way in two step. So when you're turning, you should always be looking in that direction. If we did a basic right turn and a left turn, that's, that's eight steps, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow. There's really only one of those eight steps that you should be looking backwards, okay? So if we started from here, quick, quick, slow, slow, and then as soon as I start turning her, she's gonna be looking in that direction, she's still looking in that direction, she's still looking in that direction, she's still, and then she's continue to move in that direction until that last step of slow, because that's the only one where she's actually facing backwards, right? So the entire process, what you guys, ladies should be practicing is if you're practicing on your own, this is something you can practice on your own, by the way, and if she steps back with the left foot, continue to move in that direction for every step and looking in that direction every time. She's looking, that's where she's going. She's continuing to look in that direction. She continues to do that until the end. And at the end, she can look back and then she starts moving in that direction again. So what I'm telling you ladies is look where the heck you're going, not just when you're dancing, when you're driving, <laughs> when you're walking, you know, so just, just look where you're going. All right, so one of the biggest problems that people will have when turning is they get off balance. And usually when they're off balance, when does it happen? It happens at the end of the turn. So what do they do? They said, what's wrong with the end of the turn? How do we fix the end of the turn? They put all of their attention on the end of the turn. But the reality is to finish on time, you have to start on time. And the biggest reason why people are off balance is because they're not finishing on time. So we're gonna break down how to start on time. All right, so if we're doing a turn, the biggest part that she will be off balance most of the time will be right there as she's finishing the turn. It's kind of hard to collect her balance, her momentum and everything, control it at the end and not be off balance because she's got all this motion and rotation. And then it's like, how do I control that at the end? And here's the secret. It's not the end of that that we really need to pay attention to most of the time. It's usually the beginning, okay? So what we need to do, this is kind of have to happen from the leader as much or even more than it does from the follower. So what we have to do is we have to lead her off of the slow, not onto the quick, all right? 
we're actually gonna lead her for a quick, quick, slow, sa, low, quick, quick, slow, slow. So the thing is, is you have to keep this in mind. If I asked you, if I turn her for quick, quick, slow, slow, and she turns one and a half turn, when does she finish, all right? She, most people say, well, she finishes on the second slow. No, or they'll say, she finishes on the first slow. No, she actually finishes before she steps on the first slow. So if you watch this again, it's in the space of time between that second quick and the first slow. So she's gonna go quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, right? Now, if she's finishing and she's off balance at the end, probably she finished late because she didn't start on time. We have to turn her off of the slow. So we're gonna, we're gonna lead her for quick, quick, slow. We're gonna place her weight on that for sa. Now her weight's on it. And then we start the rotation before the quick. And then she'll step quick, quick, slow, slow, right? If she's finishing late, that's gonna look more like this. She'll do quick, quick, slow, slow. And now she's off balance and she's gonna have a really hard time turning the other direction. Her center's not over top. So what I'm telling you leaders to do is really be aware of when you ask her to begin the rotation, all right? So we're actually gonna lead her to go quick, quick, slow, sa, low now, and then she's got enough rotation. She has to get, if she's doing pivot turns, which is what we're dancing here. She has to get a half a rotation between the second slow and the first quick. So she has to get that rotation and then step on the quick. I'm gonna show you this with my feet here. So if I did quick, quick, slow, sa, low, I have to get half and then it's quick, quick, slow, slow. Now, on the other hand, if he waits too long and doesn't lead that, it's gonna look a little bit more like she's gonna get maybe a quarter of a turn because that's all she has time to do. So if we go quick, quick, slow, slow, and then I wait too long through that slow, and then I suddenly ask her to turn, she can't get a half a rotation, she might get a quarter. Now that extra quarter that she didn't get has to be made up somewhere. And so she, now she's trying to pivot through those, and now she's gotten to here, and then she still has rotation at the end, and that's why that rotation hasn't collected. If you finish this, the turn on time, which means you started on time, if we go quick, quick, and now she has slow, slow, she has plenty of time to collect that momentum and then redirect it and rotate the other direction. So to finish on time, you must start on time. Rotation happens off of the slow, not onto the quick. Try that, promise you that'll work. Look, we can give you all kinds of different ways that you can lose your balance or get your, make your balance better through the turn and all this stuff, but there's really only one reason that you'll ever lose balance, okay? Is that all of your blocks of weight are not positioned vertical. So let's talk about that a little bit. All right, so if I led Rose for a turn here, her head, her shoulders, her hips, her knees, everything have to be vertical this way. Gravity pulls her that way, right? If those blocks of weight are not vertically positioned, then she's gonna be off balance. So if you look, her head is up, her blocks of weight are all positioned vertically through those turns, okay? So some mistakes that people make, obviously, I mean, dance teachers say this all the time, but don't look down, don't look at your yeah. feet, right? Not only if you look at your feet, do you look like, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Like you're not really portraying confidence, but on top of that, by putting your head down, it puts all of that weight forward. They're there, we promise. We there promise we haven't collected we them. Dancing. Right, but. Keep an eye on them. If I stood on one foot and I kept that foot here and I kept all of my blo uh, blocks of weight this way, I could stand on one foot. But if I do this, I start to fall in that direction. Okay, so what we have to do is get your head and everything in one line because gravity is gonna pull that way regardless. If I have my body position off to one side, I'm leaning forward, my posture's not right, and any of these different things happen, then it's gonna uh, misbalance your weight from that vertical position. So what you really need to focus on is trying to get all of those blocks of weight vertically. Now this is very, very vague because I can't see you guys right now and you may not know that your blocks of weight are off, but ultimately the goal is to get all of those blocks of weight vertical and be on one foot at a time through those turns. Now the leaders can certainly throw her off too, and it might not be her fault, okay? Yeah. 
um, if he's pulling on her in some direction or he could actually pull her off her center probably easier than she can pull herself off her center, okay? So we talked about this before, but you got this halo that goes around her head. It's got to be the same circumference around when we lead that turn. If that turn, that halo is short on this side and wide on this side, and I'm doing this, her body is going to be pulled into the center of the circle. So our job as leaders is trying to make her balance as best as we can help her to do that, all right? So if I take my hand around that halo and keep it the same circumference around, that's really gonna go a long way with helping her to maintain her balance in the center of that circle. However, if I led this like this and kept it narrow on one side and wide on the other, that's gonna pull her in all kinds of different directions. If I'm on one foot, everything's gotta, if I'm on my left foot, everything's gotta be on that foot. If everything is on my right foot, it's gotta, you can only be on one foot at a time. If I'm on both feet, my, my center is actually positioned directly in between them. It's not on that foot and it's not on that foot. And when you're turning, you're on one foot at a time. So now Rose is on her left foot, she turns, she positions on her right foot, and then she turns around that. She has to be on one foot at a time, keeping all of those blocks of weight vertical, right? So give that a try. And if you guys have questions with that one, let us know. All right, guys, we hope that these six tips have been helpful for you guys, but we've got another six tips coming next week for the second part of this series. So next Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Central, uh, tune in here and we'll give you guys the next six tips and we'll see you guys next time. Be there.